Our next speaker is somebody who is responsible for the dynamic change we see in the city day in and day out. A very, very dynamic individual, full of innovative ideas and ways to execute them. He was the IAS All India Topper of his batch of 1992, holds a Master's in Psychology from the Delhi University and a Business Management degree from IIM Kolkata. As Vice Chairman of Hyderabad Urban Development Authority, or HUDA, he has been responsible for a number of developmental programs in rural and urban sectors. He's on the board of numerous social organizations and is widely responsible for a lot of the fantastic upgrades the state and the city has seen in the past few years. A visionary, Mr. Jay Shranjan, our next speaker. It's a matter of great honor to be here. I'm not going to st speak about uh, tourism, but I do hope that you are enjoying the hospitality, this wonderful monument, this wonderful tourism complex is offering to you. In uh, Andhra Pradesh, something very remarkable, something very amazing is happening practically in our backyard. And uh, it is that story that I want to share with you. As we all know, when we talk about the wonderful growth story of our country, India shining, there is also at the same time something extremely disgraceful which more or less coexists, and that is the very high incidence of uh, poverty that we see. In fact, some of the poorest of the poor people live in our country, and they face a number of uh, vulnerabilities practically every moment of their waking life. Politicians, administrators, policy makers, we have all been struggling in what exactly can be done in a rapid way to get rid of this poverty, but uh, there are countless failures and practically nothing to cheer about. If at all something has, is there to speak about, that has happened at a very small scale. It is a small pilot, but to champion by some small NGO or one individual, perhaps impacting 100 lives or 200 families or so on. So a large scale solution of tackling endemic, low-end, grinding poverty is something which has eluded us for the last so many years. And uh, <coughs> what has happened in Andhra Pradesh in the last 10 years at a scale, at the scale of the entire state, impacting uh, close to about uh, a, a crore of uh, poor families is the case study, is the example that I want to share with you. And uh, whatever I share with you is all very authentic because uh, 10 years ago, I was the founder project director of this initiative in a district in Andhra Pradesh called Chittur for three more years. I worked there for three years and for three more years, I followed up this project in another backward district of Andhra Pradesh called Kadapa. And thereafter also, I have been associated in various ways in capacity building, in hand holding, in monitoring, evaluation, etc. So every piece of information that I share with you is all authentic and something which I have personally experienced. Now, <coughs> we are all aware that uh, since independence, perhaps even before that, the government has been spending money in the name of the poor. But the paradox is that we are spending money on this side, but the number of poor is growing more and more. Even those who were marginally poor earlier are now becoming the poorest of the poor. So as I say on this slide, the existing poverty elevation programs have at the best made only a notional, a symbolic, a very marginal impact on the lives of the poor and has done nothing really for the poorest of the poor. And uh, if you for a minute pause and think about who these poorest of the poor are, in fact, in, uh, they, are aware, they are present, they are spread throughout the country. In certain states, they are more in numbers, they are more visible. In Andhra Pradesh, they are found mostly in what are known as the drought prone districts. For instance, some of the Rail Seema districts, some districts of Telangana, which are in the rain shadow area. And uh, if you try to profile them, Typically, the uh, poorest of the poor family has no assets, has no skills, mostly is engaged as a wage laborer, that too in agriculture farms where uh, the agriculture operations depend largely on uh, the prevalence of monsoons. During the times of distress in, uh, in agriculture operations, they migrate, they take up all kinds of odd jobs, their children will not be found into schools, they will have no social security worth uh, 
are talking about they will be having all kinds of superstitions most of them will be prone to spending whatever little they earn into drinking gambling and so on so they will be leave, leading types of lives which are absolutely marginal absolutely uh, secondary in terms of numbers in andhra pradesh in the country as a whole it, it is estimated that the poorest of the poor are close to 26% but that again is a very large number of uh, 1.2 billions if 26% is the poorest of the poor that is close to 300 million and uh, <coughs> the one very important point to understand is that in the last 60 65 years the concern of the official machinery has been to deliver all kinds of things to the poorest of the poor they have been trying to they, the policy the machinery has tried to give them loans it has tried to give them uh, buffaloes it has tried to give them uh, kirana shops it has give, tried to give them loans of all sorts focus has been on has been on delivery if there is a corruption in this delivery stream let us try to deliver in this way if this is uh, system is not working let us find an alternative system the entire focus has been just on this single track which is to deliver various kinds of doles to them there has been hardly any effort made to create a strong receiving mechanism which is something very very fundamental you might deliver all kinds of things but if there is nothing to receive it it is like pouring water in a bottomless well so <clears throat> this is the realization of last uh, 60 65 years of our experience in repeatedly failing in poverty alleviation programs improving the quality of life and the quality of living of the poorest of the poor people and uh, due to the consistent focus on delivery that to, with all kinds of uh, shortcomings and uh, deficiencies the credibility of the machinery also has got completely eroded in the eyes of the poorest of the poor if i do not know whether uh, many of you are familiar with what goes on in a small rural hamlet in some uh, some uh, out of the world location but the typical scenario is that the government machinery which is supposed to work for the benefit of the villagers particularly the poor the poorest of the poor that is hardly available in the villages the the let us say the village level worker he will be mostly found operating from the nearest city he will go occasionally once in a while as a tourist to the village which is uh, supposed to be his workplace even when he goes there he will hardly spend any time with the poor he'll be found only talking to the rich people the better of the the landlords and all what goes on between them is also shrouded in secrecy it will be usually a closed door affair and the impression given outside will be that they are discussing how much percentage is yours and how much uh, percentage is mine and under compulsory circumstances when they are required also to meet the poorest of the poor they will be absolutely impatient they'll be looking at their watches or oh, it's 4 o'clock i have to rush back so they will show least amount of interest in engaging meaningful with the poorest and the poorest are watching this they are witnessing this for the last 60 70 years and their faith on the system as a whole there might be brilliant people in the system individually but the system as a whole has really failed them and therefore its credibility has been completely eroded so when i say that the focus has been on delivery alternatively the focus should be on creating this receiving mechanism a big question is that who will do that who will create that receiving mechanism receiving mechanism is not going to be created out of some magic people are not going to listen to one speech and become highly receptive to ideas or or uh, activities lots of intensive work needs to be done but who does that if the credibility of the large government system is completely eroded and if the same system goes to the poor and asks them to organize ask them to become receptive perhaps the poor will only laugh at them so in uh, andhra pradesh a different approach has been tried out it has been going on for the last 10 years and uh, it has achieved tremendous success what the key message that uh, we try to discuss which uh, which we try to uh, explain to the poorest of the poor is that if you want to really come out of poverty you require uh, investment you require money we have actually calculated that a typical poorest family if it uh, wants to become 
at least as good as some of those non poor may, they may not become uh, filthy rich overnight but at least if they have aspirations to become as good as the few non poor families of that village then they require aspirations to rise uh, just above the poverty line become as good as uh, some of the humble families which are there which are outside of poverty then obviously you require investment you require money and we have been able to calculate that uh, in andhra pradesh a typical family requires 50 to 60000 rupees investment solid investment if it has to come out of this poverty but then the question is is there anyone who can give them that 50 60000 rupees in fact this is a question which we ask the poorest repeatedly do you have the wherewithal presently to get 50000 or 60000 from anywhere and the standard answer would be you are talking about 50000 60000 even 5 rupees will be impossible for me to get from someone as i said they are uh, in the present circumstances they are not even able to mobilize 5 rupees 10 rupees 50 rupees 500 rupees so aspiring to get 50000 rupees 60000 rupees is uh, just a uh, pipe dream but we have been able to convince the poorest of the poor that there are agencies who are prepared to give you this kind of investment support but they do not do it right now because they don't have any faith in you you do not enjoy any credibility you do, do not enjoy any credit worthiness and we also tell you we also tell them that in case you want to become credit worthy if you want to develop credibility all that has to be reflected in your actions you cannot write on your head that i am credible believe me give me money today people wear t-shirts with all kinds of uh, slogans a poor, poor person cannot wear a t-shirt tomorrow telling that i am credible i am credit worthy give me loans and all that so that has to be reflected in your activities in your attitudes so this is the key message which we deliver in the social mobilization process that you can also get this kind of investment support but certain things need to be done and uh, the steps that we follow in the social mobilization process is that we completely disregard the government machinery in handling such a important and sensitive task. The project which has been going on for the last uh, 10 years in Andhra Pradesh has employed young boys and girls who have been picked from uh, all over the state from premier institutions to work as community mobilizers, to work as community organizers and to live with the poorest of the poor. See the poorest of the poor live in various uh, habitations, hamlets which are scattered all over. The fundamental uh, change which happens is when the community coordinators go to these spaces go to these places where the poorest of the poor are and start living with them and this is something which the poorest notice immediately because they are used to a system wherein a very selfish a very non-caring a very insensitive government machinery interacts with them as a complete contrast they find a system where highly educated qualified well-to-do boys and girls who could have found employment anywhere in the world are coming and living with the poorest of the poor facing the same uh, challenges which the poorest face on a day-to-day -day basis when the Co coordinators come and start living in the poorest of the poor habitations they don't bring anything with them if the poorest are living in a hut they also live in a hut if the poorest are drinking some uh, low quality water they don't carry any bislary bottles uh, with them and drink that water so that creates a very strong uh, bonding between the community the poorest of the poor and the and the coordinators and it is that bonding which provides the foundation for very very dramatic kind of social change which happens so the coordinators get into this uh, system which we call village immersion they immerse themselves in the lives of the poorest of the poor and wait for some kind of response to come the response is uh, variable sometimes it happens within weeks sometimes it takes months sometimes it takes very very long time in fact the community also the poorest of the poor also is not immediately open and trustful of these people they have had bad experience in the past i recall some of the coordinators have been treated very very badly also initially in fact i can give you an example there is a community of the poorest of the poor where the prime occupation was to make this uh, illicit liquor 
and when our coordinator went to that community to live with them, they thought that he is a plain clothes uh, policeman and he has come to spy on them. So they threw chili powders in his eyes just to drive him away. But because he was persevering, he again went after three, four days. Again he was driven away and he went again. And uh, thereafter they accepted him, they allowed him to live with them and then they <coughs> went through this entire process and now the kind of uh, transformation which has happened in that village that is amazing there have been such poorest habitations also where uh, the huts of the poorest of the poor are so small that a, th a third person cannot just really fit in I recall another instance where our community coordinator could not find even a small space in the huts of the poorest of the poor and then he found that there was a small uh, water pump, a pump house which used to pump water to the better of uh, spaces, areas of that village which was hardly some, uh, some uh, 8 feet by 8 feet and for 6 months that was his home. He used to live in that small 8 feet by 8 feet uh, pump house. So these are some of the <coughs> ways in which the coordinators were able to really develop a very very strong grapple a very very strong bonding with the community and then tremendous amount that laid the platform for uh, amazing incredible kind of change and transformation so once the community coordinators get an acceptability in the community then they start discussing about the poverty situation and as I explained the key message which is given there is to encourage the poor to develop that credibility credit worthiness into them and help access that kind of investment which uh, will help them coming out of poverty. The key step there is to organize the poor into self-help groups because uh, it is also told to them that uh, fighting poverty by itself by an individual or by a family is, an, is almost an insurmountable problem so unless you unite because the non-poor are extremely well united they are very well organized on any issue where there is a confrontation between the poor and the non-poor the organization the superior uh, networking of the non-poor always helps them win that battle so the poor needs to also get organized so the self-help groups are created the capacity building of self-help groups uh, take place and then the one very amazing thing which happens at this stage is that someone amongst the poorest of the poor who has been receptive to these uh, ideas, these talks, these discussions which the poorest, uh, which the co coordinator is having with the poorest of the poor, he is identified through a process and he is uh, motivated and inspired to continue this process and also spread this in nearest habitations because we have limitations on the number of coordinators we can position and as we know there are hundreds and thousands and thousands of villages where poorest of the poor live. So in case uh, this initiative has to spread fast, it has to spread through the community resource persons who are our uh, social activists, community activists. The groups of uh, small uh, small groups within the village are also federated at the panchayat level, at the mandal level and a very strong uh, robust community organization exists. Lots of capacity building support is given to the organizations. They are told about why they should send their children to school, why they should stop all these kind of wasteful expenditure, why they should take better care of their health, why things like uh, marrying of girls at a very young age, ostentatious marriages, all kinds of issues are discussed, they are able to internalize some of these ideas. The basic uh, message which is given is that anything which you do which takes away from your cre credit, credibility and credit worthiness, that be an obstacle for coming out of poverty. For instance, if they are not sending their children to school, it is explained to them that if since you yourself have missed the bus, you have not really studied, but if you don't send your children also to school, people who are today available to give support to you, they will doubt you. They will think that I cannot trust this man with higher sums of money. I may give him symbolically some 100 rupees, 500 rupees, 1000 rupees, but when it comes to big ticket investment, they cannot be really trusted upon because they are not educated, they are not literate, neither have he studied nor has he sent, nor has he sent his child to school. <clears throat> In villages after villages, this kind of changes have happened. Large number of poor are today willing to send their children to school. I recall another e example, again a very moving example. 
for this very small uh, village in Chittur district where for generations no one had studied. The practice which was followed in the poorest of the poor households was that the moment the child becomes let us say 7 years old or 8 years old, he would be immediately put into bonded labor. He would be put in the family of some uh, landlord there and not for some very great amount, maybe for some 800 rupees, 1200 rupees, 1400 rupees. The rest of his life would be spent in uh, that kind of a bondage uh, system. When this kind of dialogue, this kind of understanding, this kind of sensitization took place, I recall these uh, community, there were perhaps 40-50 houses of the poorest of the poor, they borrowed money from here and there, went to the landlords, told them that we have taken, uh, let us say, 5,000 rupees in the last five years for my son, this much for my daughter, repaid all the money, freed all the children, and some 30-40 children were suddenly sent to school. So some very amazing kind of things have happened which uh, could not be imagined also. In fact, uh, lots of government officials, politicians who used to look at those villages, their first thought would be absolutely dismissive that, oh, these people can never change. Their, their, their uh, forefathers onwards, they are like this only. And such kind of transformation which, uh, which happened. So much of uh, case studies, so much of illustrations, so much of examples. I can tell you of another uh, quick uh, uh, example here. Again in Chittur district, there are some uh, tribal habitations and it was found that uh, there was again a practice which was uh, being followed in those habitations. The moment their girls would become older, maybe 15 years, 16 years, they would all go to Bombay, Pune, they would be put into this uh, flesh trade, that kind of activities. And uh, again when our coordinator went there and he spent some time, he started discussing, he, he inspired some local activists, they all realize that this is something which puts a shame, an element of shame on our community. And they thought that they will stop it. And I have been monitoring those three tribal habitations for the last eight years. So when our coordinator uh, started this, we did a quick survey and we found that there are 54 women or girls from those three habitations, tribal habitations, who are not in the village, who are, who are outside. And I'm very happy to tell you, I just checked the st statistics uh, two days ago, out of those 54 women, 38 women are back, they have been mainstream, they are living uh, regular lives and since the last 8 years not even a single new girl has gone out and uh, in a way, I mean 8 years is a long enough time to kind of conclude that uh, they have internalized and they have completely changed. So these kind of miracles have, have happened and uh, as I am repeatedly telling you, these kind of things happen only through that very intensive process oriented approach which is following, which is being followed at the cutting edge level, at the level of the poorest of the poor. And uh, the core of that is the ability of the community coordinators who to, to really transform the lives of these uh, poorest of the poor by creating that sense of uh, hope, creating that sense of purpose, creating that kind of a vision. In fact, one of the typical uh, profile features of the poorest of the poor is that they do not really have any kind of a long-term vision, which is very obvious. When they are struggling for their day-to-day -day life, it is very obvious that they will not be able to really think of what will happen after one year, five years, ten years. Every day is a struggle. Twenty-four hours in their mind, they are thinking about how the next meal is going to come. Now, <clears throat> so once these uh, community organizations are strengthened, it is the time now to give them that kind of an investment support. Now, that support is also very carefully planned a very scientific process which is called livelihoods analysis that is carried out. What are the opportunities in the village? What are the activities which the poorest are per presently performing? A value chain analysis is done. Where are the gaps? What kind of investment support is required to bridge the gaps? If by and large the existing uh, livelihood options are saturated, there is not much of possibility of getting additional returns, the new li livelihood activities are planned. What is uh, there which the market can take? which the market can support and based on this a very elaborate demand driven plan is prepared for which this funding support comes. Some of the support comes from the government itself and a large part of the support comes from commercial banks. In fact I will show to you in a later slide that uh, <coughs> 
while the government has invested some amount in this uh, process oriented approach it's it has been able to leverage almost 10 to 12 times more from commercial banks directly into the hands of the poorest of the poor and then at, an attempt is made to support these uh, poorest of the poor through various other ongoing programs in a convergence uh, manner so the poor benefit enormously through and the poorest of the poor particularly have benefited enormously through this kind of a social mobilization it uh, establishes their credi credibility trust credit worthiness which is the fundamental there is less dependence on money lenders because indebtedness is one uh, factor which always keeps them perpetually in poverty so they are able to generate their own uh, corpus increased access to credit and mostly it gives them a new sense of identity they realize that they are also someone in the society they have a voice that identity of being a part of a community organization that that really strengthens their capacity to articulate to negotiate to interact with the non poor and so on and uh, in the last 10 years as i was uh, telling you 10 years is a long period of time and the scale also statewide in practically every village of uh, the state this kind of mobilization program is going on 99.5 lakh poor poorest of the poor families have been supported have been mobilized 2500 has been the cross investment has gone for this mobilization process basically to position young uh, coordinators also capacity building efforts but this 2500 crores has been able to leverage 20000 crores each rupee of which has directly gone in the hands of the poorest of the poor without any leakage and the communities of the poor have taken control of a large number of uh, community programs they look after the employment programs watershed anti child labor anganwadis health nutrition sanitation marketing trafficking literacy in fact uh, in the, in the tribal areas of east godavari the poorest of the poor are also running a power company they are generating power from a hilly hydro uh, power plant and uh, many of you many of us are aware that uh, the left wing ex extremism which uh, used to be the most uh, significant identity of andhra pradesh that it is a naxalite infected state it is completely gone now many people mistakenly believe that it is a result of very efficient police action of course police have had their role to play but uh, more than the police is role is this kind of grassroots mobilization which has benefited the poorest of the poor which has helped the state come out of uh, lex extremism so <clears throat> my final point is that if anyone is serious about getting rid of poverty instead of just giving a lip talk then this is the only way in my opinion opinion of creating that strong receiving mechanism through a very intensive process of social mobilization that is the way out otherwise everything else is just for show just for drama and nothing is going to happen beyond that so thank you very much for this uh, patient here